Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. So now I have updated to 1.1.3 and hopefully that will fix some of my stability issues, you never know. Uh, I've got some mods that are still technically from 1.1.2, so that's a bit of a complication. They haven't been updated yet, but everything looks good so far. But let's take a look at our extant missions to see that everything is working out properly. Alright, so uh, let, let's go to the most recent thing first, actually. Uh, let's go to the Pioneer Base. Uh, well, how about the little orangish sky crane thing first, and then we'll go to the Pioneer Base. So, uh, the first thing I want to do for this episode is to actually create a crew transfer vehicle for the surface of the moon. So something that will launch, deliver a crew to the surface of the moon, and then return back to Kerbin is the goal. Okay, well, um, sort of floating around. SAS isn't on, but it somehow reoriented itself to prograde. That's interesting. Oh, a mech jeb is on, I suppose. Yes, my mech jeb is active. Okay, well, everything else looks to be in order. Interesting that the, I need to get my normal mech jeb displays up is the problem here. I haven't got that in this install. And there's the moon. The moon seems to be fine. The Kerbin is blocking the sun, but that's Minmus over there, I think. Okay. All right. Let's let's go to the moon base. Okay, Pioneer Base. Um. Wow, that's an interesting effect there. Uh, I don't know what's going. Why Why does it seem like it has clouds or dust or something? Does the moon is the moon supposed to have dust storms? Is the moon supposed to have dust storms? This is weird. But uh, yeah, the base base seems to be fine. Uh, we have supplies, fertilizer, a little bit, mulch. Did I deliver mulch here? Thought I might have delivered mulch, but this is definitely dust, huh? Um, I don't think I had this set to chemicals, polymers, and metals. I'm pretty sure that's not what I set it to. I don't know if uh, Kerbal can reset that to a different mix. Uh, but that's what it is right now. Enable? No. Hmm. I guess it defaulted to the default one. We've got machinery there. I guess that's what that makes. Okay, so inflatable workshop is fine. Um, supplies in the habitation module, no mulch. And uh, otherwise we have supply packs and that looks fine. Now let's go to the emergency hab. The emergency hab seems to be intact and as designed. Yes, this is very much exactly right. Yeah. Oh. Okay, the the caribou rover does not seem to be quite all right. It's got uh, sort of a issue with its wheels. They seem to be offset by quite a lot. Also, it's interesting that it doesn't have the internal sound. You know, with the bass or the emergency hab, there was an internal sound that you heard uh, Chatterer make, but this doesn't have it. So I, I don't know what that signifies. There certainly isn't enough crew. And I'm noticing that we seem to have lost our solar panels. So before we can use this operationally, we will need to, well, let's turn off the lights on it. That'll save some electric charge. But we'll need to have a Kerbal uh, come out and slap some solar panels on using KIS. Uh, I don't know. Um, do we have any in the crates? No, I didn't put anything. I, I thought I put something in the crates, but apparently not. So that's not a thing. Well, bit inconvenient. We'll have to bring some solar panels out. Now KIS is one of those mods that I uh, I don't think has been updated to 1.1.3 yet, so that's another question. Let me check that I can drive this around still. There's no point adding solar panels if we can't actually control it. It looks fine. Yeah. Slowing down. Brakes. Okay, comes to a full stop. No, no obvious issues. Okay, 
So let's take a look at our orbital bases around places. Okay, this is Moon Station 1. It's a little bit dark here. I, uh, I once again note that the solar panels, well, they, hold on, this is a little bit weird. They're, they're nubs, the part where they attach to the, to the body of the station exist, but the actual panel does not seem to exist. And it also, well, it's, I don't know, it seems to be recharging. Unlike with the rover, it says it's recharging. I can't retract or extend it. I mean, all solar panels usually have the retract panels or extend panels option. This doesn't, so it recognizes there's something wrong. Otherwise, we have full supplies. There's obvious room for Kerbals, power, docking ports. So I guess this is operational. Alright, here we are with the Minmus station and its associated lander. And once again, it's, uh, rid well, no, wait. We, we've got solar panels. They're just not the solar panels I was expecting. I mean, one by three, this seems like a single panel here, doesn't it? There's something up with the solar panels. But we also, these are the near future solar panels, and they seem to be alright. It does seem to be the stock solar panels that are a little bit weird. Uh, vent stock revamp, uh, adjusted stock solar panels. And these also don't have a retract, but maybe they're just non-retractable. So that's a possibility. But they don't look the way I would expect them to look. So that's the problem. Otherwise, everything looks to be in order here. Okay. And uh, the station around Kerbin then. Okay, Kerbin Station 1, and it's basically the same story. The full voltaic panels are just nubs here. and But they do recharge the station anyway. So we've got weird invisible solar panels. Otherwise, station is alright. I'll take it. I'll take it for now. Okay, well I tried to start building something in the VAB, but I decided to try the solar panels in there. And as soon as I tried to delete the solar panel, it worked in there, but when I tried to delete the solar panel, it crashed the game. So, I decided to check in with the Venstock revamp thread, and Venstock revamp isn't technically updated for 1.1.3 yet, it hasn't had a 1.1.3 release yet. Uh, they're holding off for other reasons related to engines messing up with FAR, uh, which is interesting, and we'll have to watch out for that as well. Uh, but, um... I had previously used in 1.1.2 version 1.9.2 of Venstock Revamp, and in this I had installed 1.9.4, and under the change log for 1.9.4 it said fixed solar panels. Well, I decided to revert to 1.9.2, and whatever fix they had for the solar panels was what was causing the solar power problem. So I have unfixed the solar panels, <laughs> I guess. I don't know what the solar panel fix was about but it has restored our solar panels as they once were. So that at least is done. Does it guarantee no VAB crashes when I use solar panels? Who knows? But anyway, we got our solar panels back. They're looking fine and we can proceed like that. So there's that update. Let me go back to VAB and build what I was gonna build. All right, folks, so here's what I've come up with. And I've encountered one other problem. It looks like Inferno Robotics, the UI isn't working quite right. So you can see we've got two Inferno Robotics buttons here, but neither of them actually work. So that's going to be a problem. I couldn't use Inferno Robotics parts for this. I don't know if we've got them unlocked yet. We've got the simple ones, but I'm going to have to resolve that before we can use some of the more complicated IR parts. Anyway, uh, let me reduce the stats here. So this is the Moonliner, and actually I do want to make a Moonliner that takes off from a runway and returns to the runway. That would be really nice, you know. And SST, I wouldn't say SSTO, it might have boosters on it, but uh, those boosters would be recoverable, and then the Moonliner would continue on its way and then land on a runway. But for now, we are doing a pod, and as you can see, the pod, I've got the 
heavy heat shield to make sure that everything survives return from the moon, which is heftier than a normal return. And then 12 rear guard engines tilted so that they pass the heat shield and tucked so that they can be protected by the heat shield. We've also got non-extending solar panels because if I put extending solar panels here, the rear guard engines would blast them. And we've got some supplies in total. We've got 12 days of supplies for two people and six days for four people. Uh, battery power, well, we don't have to worry too much about that because of the solar panels. Um, there's uh, LFO all the way. There's actually an LFO tank. It's not really seating. I put the I put the windows on as adornment, even though there are no kerbals in there. I'm cheating. Uh, I've got the air brakes. I've got total delta V of 2,995. So what I'm calculating is 900 to get to the moon, uh, 200 to get into orbit around the moon. So that's 1,100. Um, then 1,000 to land. Uh, so 2,000, uh, 2,100 at that point, and then 800 to take off. And then, okay, I, I think I'm a bit short. <laughs> um, I need to I need to be able to transfer back home. Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll have to make this a little bit heavier. Okay. Now, I've tweak scaled these landing struts up by to 140%, because that's why I needed, and I couldn't use the other landing struts. The other landing struts wouldn't properly... Oh, it's not extending properly. Well, I hope it'll extend properly later on. Anyway, uh, wouldn't pass the heat shield. We'll have to see whether that works out or not, or whether the tweak scaling messes something up. Everything is partly messed up. Oh, because I increased the size of this tank, the little ladder rungs don't work quite right anymore. Hold on. Okay, that should be fine for those rungs, but this should be moved up a bit. Okay. So that's all fixed, but the air brakes need to be tilted out a bit now. The air brakes are huge. I didn't realize how big it big they were until I put them on here. We've got parachutes, so it's not a powered landing on Kerbin yet. Now that'll be later as well, because the rear guards don't have that kind of thrust. And so that stage it has a two thrust weight ratio relative to the moon, so that should be fine at least. Okay, and then even though I, I said I, I wouldn't do it, I have decided to put an SRB with a crude pod. And that's because um, we need to get to orbit relatively quickly if we want to try and test this stage return. But maybe I'll just let stage recovery do the stage return now. I mean, we tested... Oh, this is bulging out a little bit. Oh, uh, this is... This shouldn't be three meters. So on second thought, maybe I won't use uh, SRB on this stage. I was going to do it because I was thinking of having to manually recover this stage. But since we've already tested this stage with the floats and the parachutes, you remember, splashed down and it barely working out, but it did work out, maybe I'll have stage recovery handle it, and in which case, I don't really need to use an SRB for this stage. Um, let's see. I mean, it's a 9,000 fund SRB. Maybe I can replace it with a poodle stage, but we will be relying on stage recovery in that case because I wouldn't be able to finish the burn for orbit and jump back in time to handle this stage. Hmm, that doesn't give us much TWR, does it? Okay, maybe something stronger than the poodle. Marlin vacuum engine. Well, the thing about this Marlin vacuum engine, it looks proper at least, but it costs a lot. The Poodle only costs 1300 The Marlin vacuum engine costs 5300 I'd rather go with two Poodles. So, let's, let's have two Poodles. Okay, that's two Poodles on it. They fit fine. They have good TWR now. It's a little bit more expensive, so... It's 9000 I guess that's not too bad. Yeah. Okay, but it's a very expensive launch, 151,000 funds. So we're really hoping that stage recovery can handle this properly. Otherwise, we're, we're going to have to watch out for our funds from now on. Okay, there we go. Moonliner 1. Let's go with two crew members who will be delivered. Oh, we only have two people available. Uh, let's go to the astronaut complex and recruit some more, huh? Um... I think we, we definitely need a pilot. Samrina Kerman? 
I think that'll be good. And how about an engineer? Uh, Sam Lee Kerman. Or, uh, wait, Georgie Kerman. Georgie Kerman is simple to remember. Okay, Samrina and Georgie. Okay, hopefully hiring them didn't cost too much. And they'll be de they will be deployed to our base on the moon. If this is all successful. And let's hope it's all successful. We need a cheaper way of delivering them, though. This might be too expensive. It depends on whether the stages are recoverable or not, and if the pod is recoverable or not. Let's find out. If it's all recoverable, then the only thing we'll lose is the inner stage, I mean the second stage, and that, and the inner stages, well, at least the fairings. And that's 9,000 funds, which is not very expensive. Okay. Okay, it's not really rotated in the best direction. But it looks solid. Alright, we'll try it. Samrina and Georgie. Let's hope for the best. Ignition. And launch. I really need my MegJet displays up and everything else configured properly. This might not be the best time to do this. It's a little bit wiggly right now. I forget, I think no, the first stage doesn't keep doesn't need to keep any fuel, I don't think. But maybe we'll we'll just say it does keep fuel and sep and ignition. Let's hope stage recovery recovers that stage. And we've got two minutes to apoapsis, which is plenty of time for this stage to do its thing. Okay, roll zero. Looks quite reasonable. Give me maybe that's a good look, huh? If it wasn't wiggling so much. Um, maybe just SAS. No, it's still oscillating. We only have a hundred electric charge though. We should... Uh, I was mistaken. I thought that we had more, but I think that's on the probe core with the first stage. We need more electric charge. We need more batteries. I think I'll let this stage... Descend. It's almost done with fuel anyway. We'll have to use the next stage to complete orbit. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll end up going down. Set. And the rear guards. Really loud. Not much TWR. Let's check the landing gear. Doesn't look like the landing gear is extending. Let's see, extend. Why does it have a wheel stress thing? Oh, deploying, okay, it says deploying. No, something about the landing gear is messed up. Well, with the landing gear messed up like that, I think uh, I think we'll just make this a re-entry test, a safety test. Well, then again, we're, we've got a full fuel load. Maybe if I switch to a different vessel and then come back, they'll be extended because they were told to extend. It's a thought. Alright, let me try that. Well, that ploy actually worked. <laughs> um, it actually worked. The landing gears are extended. I hope they'll work. That's a different sort of story. And then I have to be able to retract them. I guess it's not too bad if they ablate on re-entry. Though we will lose funds. Um, there's an exclamation mark there. Hold on. Uh, Moonliner 1 probe. That was our first stage. Distance 85.5%. Tumor velocity of 4 all engines appear to be recovered. Yep, uh, 92,000 stage value, 79,000 recovered. So that's good. What's this? 
Recovery complete. Okay. Uh, this is some other probe that we recovered for zero funds. I don't know what that was. I don't understand that. Distance to vessel 205 kilometers. Recovery factor at this distance 100%. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Okay, anyway, let us proceed to the moon then. Okay, so this will be our trajectory, a mild free return, 856.4 meters per second. I say mild free return because obviously we could make it tighter if we needed to, but I don't feel like we need to. With these engines, how long will Vern take? Well, I mean, it's a nine minute stage, but we're only using like a quarter of it or so. Says estimate burn 3 minutes and 41 seconds, but we've got the better burn time dots here, so maybe we should go with that. And is there a reason why we're rotating as well? I'm going to kill rotation. There we go. Just If I click node, it starts to rotate. It's got a little roll wobble, you see that? But if I click kill rotation, it's fine. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, and this 1.1.3 uh, version, Megjeb seems to be worse off. Its roll dampening is worse than it was in 1.1.2. I don't understand how that could be. Well, I decided to check the, the debug menu because we were going a little bit slow. I mean, uh, my new computer is very nice and powerful, and so I was surprised to see it in the yellow. And my conclusion was that something was going wrong in the background, and indeed it is curb alarm clock. You can see curb alarm clock is very much lagging things here with all this I don't know what. So once again, I'll have to dump curb alarm clock. I, I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, curb alarm clock is very important for when we start doing more complicated missions and mission sequences. But right now... Okay, let's see what's actually going on. And that's good enough. Good periapsis around the moon. Alright. Well, before I get to the moon... I think I'll uh, get my MechJeb displays back in here and dump curb alarm clock so we don't have the lag. Okay, we have entered Mooner SOI and we should get some inclination so that we can get to the base which is at uh, 29 degrees south. Taking a look at our Delta V situation, I'm not confident that we would have enough to get back to Kerbin. We might have enough to get back into orbit, but not quite enough to get back to Kerbin. We might need some more fuel in this vehicle. Well, we are in orbit around the moon, and we'll have to delay a bit in order to hit the Pioneer base now. Electric charge diminishing as we go into the nighttime side. I'm lifting the periapsis up a bit, but that's enough. Alright, I'll be back with you once we're lined up and ready to land. Okay, well, it doesn't look like we're gonna be hitting the target in full daylight. That's annoying. Also, interesting to note is that when we take a look at our life support situation, We've got this Delphi crew rotation pod. I thought we had docked that to the Minmus station, but it seems to be free floating. And those guys apparently have not been transferred to the station. They're still orbiting around Minmus, and their electric charge is done for. So I need to handle that. I, I thought we had transferred them in, but I guess my memory's failing me. Uh, so yeah, that's something to pay attention to. But first, let's do with this. Final descent now. Yep. 
explode. Okay. Quite a tilt to it. Mm. I think it's sort of sitting on the. Yeah, it's definitely sitting on the heat shield in an unpleasant manner. Okay. Uh, well, our our electric charge is diminishing. Let's extend the ladder. Uh, let's have the engineer get out first, EVA. Sorry, it's dark. Let's see, can we enter from this direction? I think so. I don't know, is this a proper airlock? Can we go in? Hmm... Wait, grab, board. Okay, Georgie is inside. There is electric charge. Oh, there are solar panels on top here. Good, good. They're just not extending solar panels. So hopefully that'll be good enough. All right, well, it's at least 25 days of electric charge, it says here. Okay, back to, well, then again, it says 15 days of electric charge on Moonliner 1 when it's basically depleted. Let's go back over there and get Samarina over here. And maybe this can do stuff, like we can activate agroponics or something. I don't know. Climb? Whoa. That's different from what he did. Uh, let's see. Oh, every time I tell her to grab, it bounces her up again. Okay, but that counted. Board? Okay, everybody's in. Now, let's see, what can we do? Lights on? And that's not much by way of lights. Um, yeah, doesn't even shine on the ground. Those downward facing lights aren't doing anything. Okay, start life support. That seems to be important. Okay. I don't know if we need to move the Kerbals from one part to another. Let's see, ship manifest. Um, they're in the inflatable workshop. Let's put them in the Pioneer module. Okay. Well, it doesn't show any extra electric charge, but as far as supplies go, it's great. Okay, and how about, can we start agroponics right now? Zero efficiency, not enough crew. Um, lights on? Okay, move, what a glow. Okay, that works. Start life support. Uh, I guess we could move Georgie into the agricultural module. He could also work in the workshop, but I think agriculture first. Okay, let's move him over to agriculture. Oh, but the electric charge diminishes very quickly when... Hold on. Uh, it, let's say lights off. No, it isn't the lights. If we stop agroponics... Oh, so the agroponics takes a lot of electric charge. Hmm. So does the life support. Let's just have it in a Pioneer module at first. I don't... I mean, I'm sure it'll recharge... Well, let's check. Let's not be sure. Let's just check. So let me start life support stack at start agroponics. Will we recharge fully in daylight? It shouldn't be too long to daylight. And there's the dust. Yeah, it recharges. We'll have to monitor the situation though. Since there's only two of them, we'll just have life support in the pioneer module and the agricultural module. Seems fair. Okay. The other thing I wanted to do quickly was to check on the Delphi crew rotation pod and what's up with that. Uh, I mean, they're gonna get mad about their situation pretty soon. Alright, so here we are, and there's no particular reason for them to be short of solar power and electric charge. They're even better off than the pod that we just landed on the moon. And yeah, taking a look at the life support status, it looks like they've got 16 days and actually probably an infinite amount of time on the electric charge. Um, still only eight days left for this to be an acceptable habitat though, so that's a problem. 
And I remember what the problem was here. Uh, we were supposed to slap a docking port onto the station. And we can see that this is in a very similar orbit to the station around the moon. Uh, that's the station. Here we are. We've drifted away from it because uh, we didn't actually manage to dock with it because we couldn't attach the docking port. I still haven't figured that one out yet. Uh, it might be in the comments to the video and I haven't read them yet. Uh, so that is an issue. I think I'll have to leave this around here. Yeah, I think I think I'll have to leave this here for now and think about what to do about it because I'm not entirely sure. If we take a look at the Minmus station, we don't have a docking slot for it. Let's see. We would have to move the moon lander, the Minmus lander. The one that Valentina has used to do so much science for us. But actually, even if we moved the Minmus lander, we wouldn't be able to attach the docking port. I mean, we wouldn't be able to connect to that docking port because that's a junior docking port and the uh, the pod that Bill and the other Kerbal are in is a normal docking port, so we were gonna stick it on the end here. Uh, Valentina was unhappy for a bit, but she doesn't seem irritated now. I think she went on strike when they were approaching, but uh, she seems uh, there's no indication that she's in trouble anymore. I mean, not in trouble, but uh, making a fuss. So. Maybe we should just test where this uh, Delphi crew rotation pod can return safely to Kerbin. Okay, well, I'll hold off on deciding what to do about this. Oh, Alton disappeared for some reason. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how to handle the situation. We could bring them back, but I'm not too sure what the best course of action is. Since they are well supplied and they have electric charge, we have eight days to decide whether to bring them back or whether to attempt another docking with the station. Uh, KIS is one of those mods that was not updated for 1.1.3 yet, so maybe there's an update that uh, will be coming about that will help us. Otherwise, I'll look at the comment section and see if there are any suggestions. It completely slipped my mind to check for that because, uh, because mainly of the Apollo 11 commemoration, I was doing live streams for that, so. Yep, all right, I think I'll leave it here and I'll immediately check for more information and I'll get on with another episode where we actually decide what to do about this. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.